Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. So on today's video, I'm going to cover two specific broad points. First, why the economic crisis is happening and why the stock markets are tumbling like anything. And should you just sell everything and go away or should you be buying more? Second, what specific actions am I taking? Am I buying more? What type of items or stocks am I buying? And why am I doing it? So great video from that perspective. Very important. If you are already an investor in the stock market, you might be panicking. So please watch this video. Hopefully it will give you some positivity. Second, if you are new to the stock market, you want to build your positions or you're looking to invest more money is now the right time. So I will speak about both these angles in a very easy to understand language. Also a very quick shout out to our sponsors for today, which is taxbuddy.com. It is an end to end platform to help you out with your tax related issues. If you have any issues related to GSTs or personal tax filing, you can check out TaxBuddy and avail their services. They have also launched a tax planner and you can use the link in the description box to avail that for absolutely free. Please go check it out. That tax planner allows you to get customized information as per the data points that you're inputting. For example, what type of tax regime you should be using, how you can use specific strategies to save taxes. If you are taking a little bit of hit in the stock market, how you can offset your losses. All these are some points that you can get more clarity on. So check the links in the description box to get access to that tax planner for absolutely free. So let's begin the video and first and foremost, let me do a very quick commentary on the current Ukraine Russia crisis that is looming and why it is tanking the stock market and some of the key points that you must remember from this entire episode. So first and foremost, the stock markets have fallen simply because of the fact that Russia and Ukraine are engaged in military actions. Russia has shown an aggressor intent towards Ukraine and has undertaken military operations. Now due to this, the entire global investing community is very panicked. They are assuming that probably a World War III type situation might happen. Mr. Putin is going to go around and capture the entire world. Both Mr. Putin and Kim Jong-un are going to friend each other on Facebook and then they are going to create their world dominance plan, what not, right? So a lot of commentary going on there. This is point number one. And this is reason for the fall in the stock market. Second important point, the timing of this crisis is really bad. Of course, there is no good time for a war per se. But to cut the entire discussion short here, the world is reeling through the COVID problem. We are still rebuilding Things just started to get back on track from a business point of view. Then Mr. Vladimir Putin thought that, you know what, why should China have all the fun? I will also have fun. Let me also jump in and throw my gauntlet and show my aggressor intent. So timing is really bad because we were rebuilding and Russia decided to spoil the party for everyone. Now, third important point that you must remember is the peripheral crises that are coming up. For example, right now, there is a lot of talk around the increasing oil prices. Now, increasing oil prices, is it good or bad for the economy? Generally speaking, it is bad because it indicates that there might be certain supply side issues. Especially this is bad in a high inflationary environment. If you are a regular viewer of this channel, you would know that I've spoken so much about high inflation, how it's going to be a perennial problem this year. And on top of that, if the oil prices escalate, it is going to further push the inflation up. So again, this scenario is not good for a wide range of companies. Important point to note here is now this oil crisis is a byproduct of the Russia Ukraine crisis. This is not a separate crisis altogether. This has emanated and the word of the day today is emanated. So this has emanated from the Russia Ukraine crisis. This is point number three. Point number four that will the investors are right now looking for safe havens. This is a very, very important point because whenever there is massive panic in the economy, bunch of large investors, they quit the equity market for a little while. They sell everything that they have in the equity market and take positions elsewhere in commodities. Now traders under such high volatile environment also need to cut their losses and move away. You will see a lot of intraday selling that is happening. So if you are a trader, these might be really troublesome times for you. But if you are an investor, these might actually not be a bad time for you, which I'll explain in part two. Fifth and final point, this entire crisis can create spillover effects in the economy. What do I mean by that? Right now, the commentary that is going on is that, you know what, European countries are going to put sanctions on Russia, this, that. America is going to put like sanctions on Russia, this, that. But if they do that, what is going to happen is that this will not become a Europe specific issue. This will have spillover effect all across the globe and it will slow down the global trade. No country in the world wants that. Right now, the entire world cannot afford not to grow. And this is the primary premise on which I'm making my investments. There is just no way that the world will not grow in the next two, three years. We absolutely need to grow in order to overcome 
all the degrowth that has happened in the covid times so i definitely believe in that story but in order for you to make investments in the stock market you also need to believe in that story if you don't believe in that particular hypothesis then there is no point in going and investing your money right now please see how this entire crisis plays out then start taking positions after one or two years but if you believe that you know what world needs to grow in the next two three years we can't afford to miss this bus, then now would be the right time to start investing. So these are the list of stocks that I have purchased and also a very clear disclaimer. This is what I am doing. I will explain you the rationale also around some of these stocks. This does not mean that you also need to go and buy these stocks tomorrow. Please act as per your understanding. Please act as per your analysis. Please act as per your own risk appetite. I am taking these positions for at least two to three year viewpoint. Now there are three specific categories of stocks that I'm purchasing. The first category of stock that I'm purchasing are strong moated companies. What do I mean by strong moated companies? Let me explain it by giving you two, three examples. First is the example of HDFC bank. I have purchased this bank today at 1450 rupees roughly. And this bank at its peak was trading at roughly 1700 rupees. So there is a good run up to be had in these type of banks. Why is it a strongly moated bank? Because there is just no reason why banks like Kotec or ICICI will displace HDFC bank as the number one bank in India. There is just no way. There is just not enough things that HDFC bank is also doing from a growth point of view and ICICI bank is also doing from a growth point of view, which will allow ICICI bank to replace HDFC bank because there is just no enough scope left for innovation as per my understanding. This does not mean that these banks will not grow. I have also purchased ICICI bank today. Why? Because as the Indian economy grows, as more people make deposits, these A plus level banks, ICICI, Kotec, HDFC bank, they will continue to grow. They will act as a very strong proxy for the Indian economy. Whenever growth accelerates for the Indian economy, it can't be done without banks coming into the picture. So that is the simple analysis with which I'm investing in HDFC bank. There is absolutely no reason why this bank should not again go back to that 1700 levels in the upcoming couple of years. This is example number one. Number two, I have purchased the number one NBFC company in India, which is Bajaj Finance. It has compounded at an excellent growth rate. So let me also show that to you at what pace the business of Bajaj Finance is growing. So from 2015, to 2021 it has almost almost five times it has increased its revenues and five times it has increased its profit so there is absolutely no way why it will again not hit its previous peak important point to note here is that i purchased bajaj finance at roughly 6700 and its peak it was trading at roughly 7800 so again it should go back to its previous peak in the coming couple of years will it come back up tomorrow no absolutely not and in fact these finance stocks might even go down even tomorrow and even in the upcoming months let me also demonstrate that point because this is a point that many people miss. So this is the 2020 COVID crisis and Bajaj Finance fell from roughly 5,000 rupees to 1,800 rupees. Stocks like Bajaj Finance are going to depict a lot of volatility. Why? Because of two reasons. One, finance stocks usually have a very high beta. So volatility or inherent volatility in a stock like Bajaj Finance is going to be super, super high. Number two, it's an NBFC. It's not a standard commercial bank like HDFC. So it is likely to show even more fall compared to HDFC bank. So the bottom line being that if you're not comfortable with volatility and if you are going to keep checking your portfolio over the next one and a half, two, three, four months, you might be stressed out. So don't buy high volatile stock or high beta stock, purchase low beta stock. A great stock right now might be something like Asian paints. But having said this, due to the high inflationary environment right now, something like HUL, something like Asian paints are going to depict a little bit of slow growth for the upcoming few months. And then at some point they are going to skyrocket. So again, please don't expect magic to happen in the upcoming four or five months. So this is the first category of stocks that I have purchased. HDFC Bank, ICICI Bank, Bajaj Finance, Kotec and Asian Paints. These are some of the well-moted companies that I have purchased today. Second category of stocks that I have purchased today are aggressive or slightly more contrarian buys. These are small cap stocks mostly and I have purchased small cap stocks from a growth point of view. They are going to depict the highest level of volatility in my opinion and they are also likely to give the highest amount of gain. Why? Because 
small cap stocks and mid cap stocks right now are most beaten down so of course their recovery might also happen quite fast so what are some of the stocks that i have purchased here so it's au small finance jyoti regions please don't go and buy it i have made a separate video but i have not been able to release it yet because every day there is some like new crisis around which i end up speaking with all of you so i will release this video please watch that video and then you could consider analyzing this stock further but yes definitely not a buying advice i have purchased symphony i have purchased vigard my tune has not changed i am going to continue to agree get these stocks now why am i bullish on these small caps because if you take a look at the nature of the small cap companies that i have purchased number one they are small caps of course the growth rate will be faster whenever the economic recovery happens and number two many of these stocks are consumer durables now consumer durables unfortunately has underperformed the market for a substantial period of time now due to supply chain related issues inflation related issues and even this year their performance is likely to stay little bit muted but having said this these are all good companies there is nothing fundamentally off in terms of how they generate sales the type of product that they sell it's a sticky product you need to buy acs fridge and bunch of other different different things and the supply chain is getting managed so it's not as if that this is a permanent problem and the companies have lost their charm altogether and they will never come back up so nothing of that sort is going to happen especially if you are keeping a 2 3 year window in mind the third category of stocks that i have purchased is deeply discounted stocks So here I have purchased two very important stocks that I would like to talk about. One is CDSL and one is HDFC Life. Now why have I purchased CDSL? Simply because of the fact that I am already maxed out on something like HDFC AMC. Unfortunately, it fell. I purchased it a little bit more today, and now I am maxed out on HDFC AMC. I am not going to buy it more. Why? Because I generally tend to follow a five to seven percent allocation rule. I do not invest more than five percent of my money. in any single asset no matter how good it is it is a part of me being a diversified investor because we don't know what is going to happen with any particular stock so we need to stay diversified that is the type of investor i am but yes if you want to build a highly concentrated portfolio you can go and do it no problem there so coming back to the story why these deeply discounted stocks cdsl works with the sentiments of the stock market right now the sentiment of the stock market is highly negative here is like market mood indicator for you you can clearly see extreme fear being depicted so people are extremely fearful people are just selling their portfolio and going away so of course something like cdsl is going to take a hit this quarter and maybe in the next quarter also but after that as the sentiment becomes little bit bullish it is 100% going to recover there is absolutely no doubt about that now same goes for hdfc life hdfc life is deeply undervalued in my opinion it has no supply chain related issues it has no specific issues the performance of the company has been great it is a great insurance company in my opinion right now some peripheral things are happening that lic ipo is going to get launched so suddenly lic will become like a great company just because it has launched its ipo the answer is no it's not going to change its operational dynamics per se so let me quickly summarize the video by answering three critical questions are the markets likely to go down tomorrow and in the subsequent weeks the answer is i don't know no one knows for sure maybe there is a very high likelihood that the markets will go down what am i going to do i am going to buy even more i purchased approximately 18 19 lakhs of stocks today and as and when markets keep on falling i am going to invest more and more money if you don't buy good stocks when they are deeply discounted when are you going to buy them so that's a simple point but no one can predict by how far the markets will go down because we are not mr vladimir putin we have no access to information what comes out of kremlin what how their mind is operating so there is no point in debating that but yes good businesses are definitely going to come back there is absolutely no second doubt about that number 2 i also purchased some stocks which had rich valuations for example i told that i am purchasing something like deepak nitrite and even today i purchased more of it have i invested all my money in it no because i feel that even now something like deepak nitrite has not come down significantly so these companies are shedding their valuations so these are likely to correct more so i'm not taking too much positions in these type of stocks as of now but they are definitely on my radar and i would love to be an investor in these companies so i'm building my positions in these type of stocks now comes the third and the most important question that should i be putting all my money if i have 100 rupees to invest in the stock market should i put everything tomorrow itself no this is just a random opinion you must act as per your understanding i am what i am generally typically trying to do is that if i have to invest 50 new rupees out of 100 then i will do it in the next week or so itself and then i will wait then i will monitor the situation then i will invest more can the market even fall down to 10000 maybe who knows no one is god but if you have to ask me for the market levels i don't see the markets falling below 15000 levels and whenever and this is the most important point that whenever the market start recovering 
you will not be able to catch them. In one one day, you will see these stocks move up by 5%, 10% also, and you will have a very hard time investing in these stocks then. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please press the like button and I will see you tomorrow. Also do go and check out Tax Buddy's Tax Planner. It's a wonderful tool. The link is in the description box.